Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Sir DL and welcome to the Aliens Blog and Math Tutorials. For today, we are going to discuss T-test dependent. We are going to study T-test dependent. What are the objectives of this lesson? Number one, discuss T-test dependent. Number one, discuss T-test dependent. Number two, calculate the dependent T value. Calculate the dependent T value. And number three, apply T-test dependent in the field of research. Apply T-test dependent in the field of research. Always remember, if you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. If you are determined to learn, no one can stop you. What is T-test? T-test, it is used to determine if the scores of two groups differ on a single variable. T-test, it is used to determine if the scores of two groups differ on a single variable. What is T-test dependent or when do we use T-test dependent? It is used for match samples and for pre-test, post-test comparisons where the pre-test and post-test are taken on the same group of subjects. Again, it is used for match samples and for pre-test or post-test comparisons where the pre-test and post-test are taken on the same group of subjects. Also, it, is, it helps us to take advantage of one specific type of design in which an important source of within-group variation can be easily identified and excluded from the analysis. Example of the application of t-test dependent. Compare the average grade in a, sim, in a sample of students before and after the grading period, but using a different way on how to learn the topics. Compare the average grade in a sample of students before and after the grading period, but using a different way on how to learn the topics. Another application of t-test dependent. Pre-test and post-test were administered to the 10 B ed students. After the administration of the new teaching strategy for one month, same test was administered again. Question, does the new strategy significantly increase the scores of the students? Does the new strategy significantly increase the scores of the students? What is the formula for T-test dependent? T-test dependent is equal to the summation of D over the square root of N multiplied by the summation of D squared minus the square root of the summation of D over N minus 1 again. T-test dependent is equal to summation of D over the square root of N multiplied by the summation of D squared minus the square of summation of D over N minus 1, where D is the difference between pairs of scores and N is the number of pairs of subjects in the study. D is the difference between pairs of scores and N, and N is, is the number of pairs of subjects in the study. We also have degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1. Degree of freedom is equal to n minus 1, where n is the number of pairs of subjects in the study. We are going to use df in order for us to look for the value for the critical value based on the table for t test dependent. Let's now try to apply this question a while ago. Pre-test and post-test were administered to the 10 B and students. After the administration of the new teaching strategy for one month, same test was administered again. Question, does the new strategy significantly increase the scores of the students? Does the new strategy significantly increase the scores of the students? How do we apply T-test dependent on this given problem? What are the steps? First step, let's now state the null hypothesis. What is the null hypothesis? H sub zero or null hypothesis, that means there is no significant difference between the pre-test and post-test scores of the B ed students. There is no significant difference between the pre-test and post-test scores of the B ed students. This will be our null hypothesis, and this is our alternative hypothesis. That means there is a significant difference 
between the pre-test and post-test course of the students. We will now be setting up or setting the alpha level that could be 0 0.05, the margin of error or 95% level of significance. Number three step, we will be computing for the value of T. We will be computing for the value of T. What are the steps in computing for the value of T? Number one step, subtract pre-test and post-test. X sub 1 minus X sub 2, example, 0 minus 14, negative 14, 0 minus 14, negative 14, 0 minus 6, negative 6, 3 minus 4, negative 1, 20 minus 15, that is 5, 0 minus 3, negative 3, 0 minus 3, negative 3, 1 minus 6, negative 5, 1 minus 5, negative 4, 1 minus 6, negative 5, 0 minus 3, negative 3. That is our first step. Subtract pre-test and post-test. Second step, find the value of d squared by, by multiplying the value of d by itself. Find the value of d squared by simply multiplying the value of d by itself. Negative 14 multiplied by negative 14, that is 196. Negative 14 multiplied by negative 14, 196. Negative 6 multiplied by negative 6, 36. Negative 1 multiplied by negative 1, positive 1. 5 multiplied by 5, 25. Negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, positive 9. Negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, positive 9. Negative 5 multiplied by negative 5, 25. Negative 4 times negative 4, 16. Negative 5 times negative 5, 25. Negative 3 multiplied by negative 3, 9. That is our second step. Find the value of d squared by simply multiplying the value of d by itself. Number 3, find the value of summation of d. Find the value of summation of d. We will be adding all the values of d. That could be negative 14 plus negative 6 plus negative 1 plus 5 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 5 plus negative 4 plus negative 5 plus negative 3. And the answer is the summation of D is negative 39. Third step, find the value of summation of D by simply adding all the values on D. Next step. Find the value of summation of d squared. We will be adding all the values of d squared, and that is summation of d squared. 196 plus 36 plus 1 plus 25 plus 9 plus 9 plus 25 plus 16 plus 25 plus 9. Summation of d squared is equal to 351. Summation of d squared is equal to 351. Find the value of summation of d squared. That would be our fourth step. Okay, we now have the values that we need in order for us to solve for the t-test dependent. We now have the values that we need and, that, and those are summation of d is equal to negative 39, summation of d squared is equal to 351, and, and the number of pairs is equal to 10. Next step, substitute the values on the given formula. We will be substituting the values on the given formula. T is equal to summation of D over the square root of N multiplied by summation of D squared minus the square root of summation of D over N minus 1. It goes like this. Summation of D is negative 39. N is 10. Summation of D squared is 351. Summation of D is negative 39, then N is 10. Again, summation of D is negative 39, N is 10, summation of D squared is 351, summation of D is negative 39, then the square of it, then N, that is 10, minus 1. Next. Multiply 10 by 351 and we multiply negative 39 by negative 39, then subtract 10 and 1. We will be multiplying 10 and 351 
and we will be getting the square of negative 39 and we will be getting the difference of 10 minus 1. That's negative 39, copy. Then 10 multiplied by 351, that is 3,510. Negative 39 times negative 39, that is 1,521. 10 minus 1, that is 9. Again, copy, negative 39. Then 10 times 351, that is 3,510. Negative 39 times negative 39, that is 1,521. 10 minus 1, that is 9. Next step, subtract 3,510 and 1,521. 3,510 minus 1,521 is 1,989. Subtract 3,510 minus 1,521. That is 1,989. Next step, divide 1,989 by 9. 1,989 divided by 9 is 221. Divide 1,989 by 9 and that is 221. Find the square root of 221. What is the square root of 221? That is 14.866. The square root of 221 is 14.866. The last step, divide negative 39 by 14.866. Divide negative 39 by 14.866. And the final answer is negative 2.623. The value of t test dependent is negative 2.623. That is our that is our answer for the value of t or t test dependent. Okay, since we computed the value for t, let's now move on to writing the decision rule for rejecting the null hypothesis. When to accept and when to reject the null hypothesis. Before that, we will be getting the value for the degree of freedom, and degree of freedom is equal to the number of pairs minus one. 10 minus 1, that is 9. The degree of freedom is 9. We will be rejecting null hypothesis if the absolute value of the t value is greater than or equal to the t critical value. Again, we will be rejecting the null hypothesis if the absolute value of t value is greater than or equal to the t critical value. And we will be accepting null if the absolute value of the t value is less than the t critical value. We will be accepting the null hypothesis if the absolute value of the t value is less than the t critical value. What is our critical value? Since we have 9, we will be having 1.833 as the t critical value for one tailed test. That means we will be happy. We will be using 1.833. We now have the absolute value of negative 2.623. We, we, we now have 2.623, and the t critical value is equal to 1.833. Let's now compare. Since 2.623 is greater than 1.8. 3, 3, we can now conclude that we reject the null hypothesis. Since p value 2.623 or absolute p value is 2.623 is greater than the t critical value, which is 1.833, we will be rejecting the null hypothesis. Therefore, there is a significant difference between the test and the post test of the B ed students. The new strategy did significant increase on the post-test scores of the students. That's how we interpret the data. Therefore, there is a significant difference between the pre-test and post-test of the B and students since the T value is greater than the, critical va the T critical value. The new strategy did significant increase on the post-test scores of the students. That's how we solve and that's how we interpret for the t-test dependent. 
I hope you were able to follow our simple rules and I hope you were able to catch up. Always remember, mathematics will always remind us that in every problem, there is a solution. Thank you for watching, everyone. God bless you.